Oh, all right, hello, everybody. Seven people watching already. Hello. Welcome. How are we all doing? Been looking forward to doing this uh, since the last one. Um, <clears throat> there was quite a bit of a furore created on uh, Twitter last night from uh, the tweet I put up to... Um, <laughs> I don't trust Nuno. Do you know what? <laughs> oh dear. I, part of me was to start off this video by talking about the the negative, the such negativity on um, uh, on Wolf's Wolf's Twitter. I think it's it's really really horrible and it's off putting for. For anybody to put anything up, and people who are very, very uh, vocal on it are saying themselves that they're taking themselves off in things like that. Now, in the next, in the next um, week or so before the transfer window, I think it's really disappointing because I don't know, I don't know. He's going to drop the trophy when we win the Premier League trophy. Doctor Multi Block, he's going to drop that trophy as well. Shiv, yes, the plan is to uh, to do one of these every single week. Obviously, I think there's there's a couple of games or a couple of weeks where there's uh, a match on a Wednesday, so that will be uh, obviously they'll have to do it differently those weeks. I've also got things on on some Wednesdays, believe it or not. Um, so yeah, just to come back to talking about the Wolves Twitter atmosphere, I think it's really, really uh horrible it's really horrible and yesterday for the first time ever uh i think i put up a tweet that was perhaps i don't think it was even negative it was purely the basis of a discussion that that we could go into tonight now about uh nuno and and the wolves going forward and do we trust nuno because in previous years, when we've been promoted, we've uh, we've kept the, the best players and the squad that's gone uh, that's come with us. Uh, and now with Nuno, we've taken the best player, or certainly one of the best players, out of that. Now I'm by no means myself saying that uh, Nuno needs replacing or anything like that. I think Nuno's a tremendous manager, and the work that he's done in just a year is uh is really really incredible and if you think that this was supposed to be uh we were supposed to be there was a three-year plan so it was next year that we were supposed to get promoted and, and uh you know so now everything's been accelerated and it's a very 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 exciting time and it's all because of Nuno it's all because of the great work that he has done he came in with a plan he was stern about that plan he was saying this is how I'm going to play these are the players I'm going to buy and the board have entrusted him with an awful lot of money and they gave him time as well. They weren't expecting promotion last year. Uh, so, yeah, there's the, the tweet that I put out yesterday. They had such a vitriolic reaction from everybody did not. It wasn't. Well, it was a question, wasn't it? It was to try and get people to come here. And there's slightly more people here than there were last year. Let's have a look at some of these comments then. I'd love to know the player reaction to Douglas. Yeah, well, Matt, that's a that's a that's something that I was thinking as well because I only met him once, Douglas. But um, by all accounts, he was a very uh, nice bloke. He was a normal bloke. He's sort of a classic footballer in terms of he's played wherever he's needed to play. He's a Scottish bloke, a British bloke, so he would have got on well, you imagine, with Cody and Doherty and and Ruddy, etc., those sort of players. But, um, yeah, it's a, and it's a fine balance, I think, of dressing room and football, and there's he would have been a really important part of that, and hopefully it hasn't disrupted it uh, too much because I do think he was quite liked, and obviously he was one of the best players in the division, but then you have to ask yourself, well, if he was that good, why hasn't he gone to another Premier League team? That's because, as we've said, for a lot of uh, the summer, 
transfer window so far is that he's not got the pace or he's not quite good enough defending. I keep thinking about uh, like Sane or Hazard, those wingers that he would have come up against uh, this this season, and I think he would have he would have struggled. I think so. Um, yeah, Oliver, you're absolutely right there. Dave Edwards was liked. I was gutted as well when we sold him, as I am now with Douglas. But you know, we have to think about the progression and moving forward. And it's definitely the right thing. What what concerns me at the moment is that what we've got at left back now is not as good as Barry Douglas anyway. You know, we've got uh, Johnny, who albeit has only played one game, uh, but doesn't look a strong prospect for me on the, in the left wing back position. But I'm sure that something or someone will come in and uh, and change that. <sighs> Doctor Multi Block. Dear me. Not just that, Tom. Mikey Burroughs said he was talking to players before the Stoke game and they said set pieces will be massively important, which is also interesting. Yeah, but you have to think uh, Moutinho and Neves and uh, players like that will be able to um, will be able to come back. Jason Walker, I need to make my bed. I know. I'll just pull that a little bit, make it look a bit tidier. I'm on, on my holidays, aren't I? Uh, Roman Sice, somebody says. What do you mean, Roman Sice? Sice. How are we supposed to say it? Sice? Sice. Who do we need? Uh, there's still a few gaping holes in the squad. Not necessarily the first team, but in the squad. And in cover for a couple of players. Um, I think we need it. Uh, I think jo Johnny coming in is a good sign in. For cover for both wing back positions, um, but I do feel like we need another right wing back cover because we've got, say, we've got Johnny and Vanagre and Giles left wing back, right wing back. We've only got Johnny and Doherty. Uh, I think we also need a, uh, another defender for the back three. Now there's been rumours about Pepe and Chris Smalling and a few others as well uh, to come in for that position. So it's it's difficult to. I don't, we're just going to wait and see what happens in the next um, in the next week or so. Danny Bart is on the way to Sheffield Wednesday on loan. Where have you heard that, uh, Darren? Um, don't ask me how this is true, but apparently Ryan Giles will start left wing back on Saturday. It wouldn't surprise me, and I would love to see. I'd love to see Ryan Giles and Morgan Gibbs White given a really good run in the team uh, this season full stop because um he's they're both really good prospects and i could see them both becoming premier league footballers in the future not necessarily for wolves perhaps i think they might have to drop down into the championship or something and get promoted with the team in the future because of where we're going and the pace at which we're going to where we're going i think it's going to be difficult for players like that to keep to keep up with us we need two players, a good defender and another good attacking midfielder, says Rob Fletcher. Sorry, Robert Fletcher. Uh, yeah. The, the attacking thing is a very, very... Um, it's been the problem for years since, really. You can go back to Ebanks Blake, although he had Dicko, I suppose, did well at... Um, in League One, but didn't really flourish in the uh, in the Championship. I think we've we can go back to to Ebanks Blake really since we've had a really really good striker. I don't know what mixer is. Sorry, Doctor Multi Block. Uh, Consalves rumours. So I don't know about that. Sorry, I don't know. Oh, Twitch. <laughs> yeah, Twitch. Shamrez, hello. It takes time in my eyes. I would have kept Douglas and added a few more players and give everyone a chance if they would make a mistake and change them. Douglas would have been okay in the Premier League. The, the difficult thing is, uh, is that, the, as I've mentioned, the pace at which Wolves are moving, it's not like previous times when we've been promoted, where, in fact, you know, I was just watching the playoff final was replayed again on uh, Sky from 2003. That team then played again in the Premier League and, and completely failed and got relegated. 
bottom of the league with 30 odd points. It happened again then when McCarthy went up and those that same team played the three seasons that we were in the Premier League pretty much and then got relegated with 24 points or whatever it was, a terrible, terrible season in 2012. So what we're doing now is moving forward at a pace at which we are going to lose players who we've fallen in love with, like Barry Douglas. It could be that Jota or Costa or Cavaliero go in the next 12 months as well. And of course, we'll be, we'll be very, very disappointed, but we'll be bringing in players who are better than those as well. So it's, it's hard for us to adapt to that as Wolves fans who have been uh, conditioned to be content with finishing sixth in the championship to now think that finishing sixth in the Premier League is the, is the, is the real ambition. Hello, Zane. Are you happy now? <laughs> Chris Smalling, Chris Smalling, Chris Smalling, says Morgan G. What about him? Would you, Jason Walker says, would you settle now with finishing fourth from bottom? Uh, I think anybody, anybody in their first season in the Premier League any team has to be happy, really, with um, with finishing 17th, purely because it's such a big jump from the Championship to the Premier League. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see whether... <clears throat> I think we've got to see how the season starts. I think we've got a fairly good, or fair, at least, uh, start to the season with... Um, uh, Everton is a winnable game at home. Leicester's a winnable game away from home. Man City at home in a big fixture could be... Uh, could be, it could be amazing atmosphere. Could could get a three points there, so it's it's difficult to tell. I I really really hope that we do. Um, I mean, even if we finish like fourteenth, that's our best season for since the eighties. So I'd be really happy with um, with anything above what we used to. Uh, Viva Nuno. I'm current. Well, I've bought it. I'm reading it currently on my. Kindle very slowly. Well, after meeting with Mr. Petalengro, is that how you say it? Uh, himself last week, he said his uh, advice was to sit, get a glass of wine or a bottle of wine and sit there and drink your way through the book. He said there's loads of like, I read the Express and Star article today about it as well. And it said about him, uh, about <laughs> Dave. Uh, there's loads of mistakes in there, spelling mistakes, grammatical mistakes and whatever, but apparently it's a real read, real, real fan read. I think attacking is okay. Bonatini was shining again, and I think top 10 finish. Uh, I can't recommend Viva Nuno yet because I haven't read it, but I think it's only worth, oh, it's only costing about £5 at the moment on um, uh, Amazon Kindle, so it's, it's definitely worth spending £5 to, to buy that. Who are we getting up the back then? Morgan. Uh, Pepe. <laughs> well, I know it's uh, it's all kind of interlinked, isn't it? Because Harry Maguire apparently is now going to be signing a much better deal with Leicester, which means that uh, United will not be going for him. They'll be going for uh, Mina from Barcelona. Um, and then... So they need to offload somebody. So that's why we've been linked with Rojo and Smallin. Jones will be the next one. It's just because we need a centre back and United need to offload a centre back. Something's going to give. So, uh, so yeah. We don't have cover for Doctor yet. I've said that. Would you rather Pepe or Smallin? Uh, that's a good question. Then I'd. I've said that I don't like Pepe because of his nastiness, but you do need that. You need a bit of rough and tumble in the uh, in the Premier League. I think he'd be a, he'd be a good signing. Team last season was a team that played together. Mixed team wasn't uh, nothing compared to last season. I just hope that we can play as a team. It's too much. Bonatini, like Ebanks Blake, will probably be too slow for the Premier League. Ebanks Blake, I know to, not to keep going on about him, but he had such a good two seasons in the in the championship for us before the Premier League. And then he was injured wasn't he, in that pre-season before it. Um, so never really got to show 
Yeah. Uh, Cavill at the hero or Traore? What do you all think? I'd go for Cav. <clears throat> Who would you like to bring in at Wolves realistically? Um, I said there was only one player. There's still only what well, I really want, and it's I don't know whether it's a possibility of bringing him in. I'm not sure who he plays for or how important he is for those for the team that he plays for. But um, Vida from Croatia, and every live stream I've done so far, I'm sure I've mentioned Vida. Uh, he's I really really like him. I think he's a dirty, horrible, ugly centre back who would be amazing for us. Uh, but is it Besiktas he plays for? Or is, or is that Pepe or what? Somebody saying Jamie Vardy to come in. Uh, I don't, I don't, I can't see him leaving Leicester. I know that that team, now that won the league, is pretty much broken up. But I can't see Vardy leaving there. I think he'd, uh, he's going to stay for a while. Bolly and Pepe would be terrifying for any striker. Jamie Vardy's having a party. He definitely is. All right, can you all do it? There's lots of people in here now. Can you just quickly drop a like on the video for me? Uh, and try and share it around us so you can get 100 people in there. That'd be amazing if you could do that. Uh, do you think the current back three is strong enough to stay up? Uh, having watched them at Derby and Stoke last week, I think they um, they control both of those games really, really well. Um, and they didn't they didn't come under a lot of pressure at any point. You didn't think, oh, gosh, these players are not good enough for the Premier League. That's what they've done over so many games now, last season and this season. Is that they've just they've controlled games from the back, uh, and I think adding Sace to the back helps. And I think that whoever we bring in is going to be of a good enough quality to to make sure that 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 uh, I can't remember what I was saying. Anybody that we add to the back three is going to be great. <laughs> uh, the Chinese dude. Well, Pat, Pat, I don't. I've never heard of him. I don't know anything about him. But um, by all accounts, he's this like one of the top goal scorers in the Chinese league ever. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. It would certainly. I think Dave as a party, if he's still in here, pointed out on. Twitter or whether it's through Talking Wolves, can't remember. But signing him purely on a financial on a financial basis would bring in so much revenue through Chinese, you know, interest that it would be worth it would be worth signing him because he's not going to be very expensive, and it gives us another option, as Nuno would say. Who would who would back up Doherty in a case of injury suspension at the moment? Well, at the moment, it would be uh, Oscar Burr. With, and we saw in that very, very brief game. Uh, so, yeah. Johnny can... Yeah, of course, Johnny could fill in a right-back as well. Yeah, it's, I think the if we were going to sign... What's his name? Wu Li? I think he... Um, it would be a PR stunt. My orange squash is lovely, Nathan. Thank you. Is Johnny left or right-footed? He's right-footed, but he's been playing on the left... I think he was originally a right right back and then switched across to left back last season. Had a really good season, uh, but he cannot kick with his left foot. That was one thing I noticed from the Derby game. He was really good, linked up with Jota a couple of times really, really well. Uh, got in behind them and stuff, but just he has not got a left foot whatsoever. It's not even as if like he was cutting in and putting the ball in like that. It's just rubbish. I... Well, on the right side, perhaps he might be. Uh, he might be better. But we'll see. Where do you think we'll finish this season with the current squad? Uh, we have if we don't make any more signings. I think we will definitely make a couple more signings. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and I think that we'll. I. Well, I was saying earlier on, any anywhere above the bottom three in your first season in the Premier League, 
Um, is is fine. We'll see. Whoever comes in is going to find it difficult to fit in this season. What's that emoji there? An orange. Oh, orange squash. I get it. Uh, whoever comes in this season is going to find it difficult to fit in with this region so close. I think we're going to struggle with goals if it stays as it is. How many more are you expecting to a three? I think you've been harsh on Johnny. Uh, all right, so to come to those few points then. So where will Wolves finish? I've done that. I think they'll finish. They'll, we'll be safe this season. I think next season we need to be, we'll push on even further and, and try and finish top six next season, I think. What what I would like and what quite a few people have already said to me, uh, if you if you want as well, the predicting competition, there's links in the description down below. If you Even if you're watching this video later, uh, you can fill them in. But lots of people are predicting Wolves to get to the League Cup semi-final at least or the League Cup, or the FA Cup final or something. People are, from what I understand, people are interested and really, really passionate about Wolves getting to a, a Cup final. And that's, that's what I want as well. I think last year, beginning of last year when we had the FA Cup run, that sort of sparked my imagination about um, uh, just seeing Wolves at Wembley and lifting a trophy and having a, a open top bus uh, ride around town. In fact, I remember, <laughs> I remember having a dream about it um, after the Liverpool game. We were just in between the Liverpool and the Chelsea games, and uh, maybe it was a, a vision of this summer and winning the uh, championship. Do you think we'll make those signings this week or really close to the deadline? Uh, traditionally, Wolves have always wanted to do their business early in the transfer window and get it done and on time. But um, it, and it, it was my understanding, and I think perhaps things have gone a little bit awry. I think that um, it was about a month ago or so now, that, or three weeks, uh, that Dalrymple came out to the Express and Star and said, all of our deals are almost done. I don't think that's quite gone as as they had planned. I think that they would they were hoping that they would have everybody, um, everybody in by now before the game against Villarreal. But we did see last year that Bonatini came in in between the Leicester friendly and the the first game of the season. So there is still a chance that people can come in. No. I think people are getting carried away to the top six and winning the FA Cup and League Cups are way over the top. Yeah, I, I agree for this season. This season, I think that finishing top six is out of the question. Um, but a season like Burnley had last season, I don't think is out of the question for Wolves this season. Uh, I think that there's a chance that we could go on a decent run and there's a couple of teams who we could catch off guard. If you look at, I mean, I'm being, <laughs> I'm being very, very ambitious here, but Man United are having a terrible pre-season. I know they beat Real Madrid yesterday, but they're having a very, very uh, odd pre-season. You're in Arsenal, you've got a new manager. Chelsea, you've got a new manager and are losing some of their top players. Uh, Spurs are moving ground, although I think Spurs are going to win the league this year. I've got a feeling that Spurs are going to win the league. Um, City, I think, will be focused on the Champions League. So I think the top teams, there are the, apart from Liverpool, I think Liverpool are probably the strongest team with the top uh, top six or seven at the moment, I think. But there's no reason why we can't win that sort of second tier that there is in the Premier League. Um, so look. Uh, what do I think about... Do I like Dazzling Dave? I do. I think he's great. Very funny. Uh, remember that ball boy against Hull? Lol. Yes. Very funny. Callum's Corner. I've never watched it. I've only seen his bits from Will and E. Spurs haven't signed anyone. I know Spurs haven't signed anybody, but they've kept uh, Deli Ali and Harry Kane and Lloris and all that lot. And I think they are a team that people will underestimate this season as well. Uh, would you take Mourinho if <laughs> No, I wouldn't take Mourinho at all, ever. I know I made a video a little while ago about um, uh, what would happen to Wolves in the next 10 years. I think Mourinho has slightly changed since then. He's a very odd man at the moment. He seems to be going through a, sort of, some sort of breakdown. Uh, 
Vinagre was classed in the Euros final. I didn't see you. I've heard that he played very, very well. Very, very well. King of the North. Up to uh, a million subscribers now, isn't he? True Geordie. Wonder if Vinagre will be first choice left wing back and Johnny first choice right wing back. A very interesting point. How many times do you think Nuno will run onto the pitch in celebration this season? Uh, it'll be in the double figures this season. I think it was only t uh, twice, really, Middlesbrough and um, Cardiff that he ran on the pitch. And there'd be quite a few, uh, quite a few pitch invasions from Nuno and his staff. Thoughts on KSI versus Logan Paul? Uh, I'll just touch on it briefly. I think they're both horrible people, and I'm not interested in the fight whatsoever. Some of the clashes and stuff in the media, I think, is uh, is uh, fairly entertaining. Anyway, do you think Moutinho will help turn the younger players in the squad, e.g., Gibbs White, from good to great? I think that's a very good point. I think, um, I think that's what we've lacked sort of in the past is that we haven't had good players to sort of model how to be good to the younger players. Um, so Moutinho definitely, I'm, I'm thinking more for Neves uh, rather than Gibbs White, but of course Gibbs White will benefit as well from that. Um, yeah, so yeah, I think that's a good point you've made there about uh, Moutinho, Marcus. Very good. With the new cards that managers are getting, how often do you think Nuno will be getting sent off? And do you think it'll be an issue? Um, fortunately, it's not it's not taking place in the Premier League. It's only in the, the Football League and it's um in FA Cups and League Cups and stuff like that. Where he well, unless it gets very, very heated, he hasn't really shown much passion in those those big games. So uh, but yeah, from where from the seat that I have at the Molyneux, which don't slate me now, is in the very posh uh, section just behind the uh, press box and the director's box, the Billy Wright upper. Uh, you can, we can we've got a very good vantage point for where um, Nuno sits, and he's constantly, constantly arguing and fighting and squabbling and berating officials and stuff. So I think you would have picked up quite a few yellow cards. And it wouldn't surprise me if he's the reason why, or part of the reason why they've had to bring in that uh, yellow and red card uh, thing there. Don't mind if he gets sent to the songs as long as <laughs> as long as he celebrates like he did against Bristol City. I think that's everybody's uh, a highlight of the season, wasn't it? The Bristol City. If anybody was there as well, what they didn't show on television was that he came, he came at the end of the game, about five minutes or so afterwards, he came back out onto the pitch and gave it a bit of that towards us. And I think that was the I think that was the moment that he fell in love with Wolves as a as a football club. I think up until that point, I think he was a little bit. Not, I don't know, not indifferent, but he didn't love it like he did after that Bristol game. Uh, it was um, really, really that turn the season, I think. Cardiff was Huddersfield, Bournemouth going down. I think that is that what I've predicted. I think it is. It wouldn't surprise me if somebody like Watford perhaps could be down there at Bright, Brighton as well. I think there's a lot of poor teams again in the Premier League. Who have not really done an awful lot in the transfer window. Uh, so, yeah. Off to bed. Can't wait for the season. Neither can I. Also, can't wait for your in depth analysis. Good night, up the walls. Good night, freedom. How much longer do you think Brighton, Evercar, and Courtney Hawes can continue to steal a living from Wolves? <laughs> That's a bit harsh. Uh, Courtney Hawes, I think, is a really good uh, footballer. I think he showed at the end of the season with Lambert that he's a good centre back at championship level. I think he's and against Man City when he played, he had really limited opportunities through last season. I think uh he met, there was a couple of times where I thought he was going to play, but it turned out that Miranda was going to play uh instead. But I really I I feel really bad for Courtney Horse because I think he's a he's a very, very good footballer, but he's just sort of he's get he's getting a little bit too old now to be saying, oh but he's still young. He needs to be pushing on now, and he need, I, I, personally, I think for his career, he needs to be moving on 
Bright, I've spoken about quite a lot on this channel. I don't think that he's good enough. There's a lot of talk about him being this uh, enigma and this amazing, like, oh, you know, he's got a good close control, but he's too slow doing, he's too slow using the ball. He doesn't pass or he doesn't shoot quickly enough for me. If you could have one player from the McCarthy Premier League team and or the playoff winning team, who would it be? That's a good question. Let me have a think now. So I've just watched the 2003 playoff final. Uh, that was on Sky Sports Football a little while ago. So I watched that and... Who would I pick? I'd probably... Uh, I'd, prob I'd have Jolien Lescott, I think, from that team. As he was then. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think. I'm just trying to, maybe Ince in the middle. I think we're lacking somebody like Paul Ince in this team as well. But I definitely have Lescott from that team. If we could have somebody from the 2019. Where's my little picture? So I'm going to remind myself who's in it. Let's have a look. Do this look. 2009. I'm going to have to get a new one on I for, um, for this year. Uh, who would fit in? Oh, to be honest, just looking at these players now, how this team win the league, I do not know. Uh, Ebanks Blake, I think, possibly. But then he didn't really do it in the Premier League, did he? He didn't do it in the Premier League. Too bad the Wolves TV isn't available for overseas viewers in the Premier League. No, but every game is being shut. Well, I don't know. Where, I don't know where you are. The Wolf eighteen eighteen. If you're in America, every every Premier League game is shown live, isn't it, on Fox and stuff? So I think you'd be fine there. And if you have a look closely online, you'd be able to find a stream for most games. Norway. Oh, you you're not the Norwegian man that I met uh, at Fulham, are you? If we were to sign Adama Traore, do you think we'll start him over Costa Cavaliero? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, oh, no. <laughs> uh, right, so look now. I personally would have Kenny Miller in the team from the player point in time. Imagine the goals he was scoring in the current team yet. Yeah. Uh, Hawes on loan to Reading, according to Nash. I think that'd be good for him. He needs that. I don't know what the Man City... Oh, no. You're not the same man. Oh, dear. Have you received your tickets for Leicester yet, mate? Yes, I have. They came yesterday, I think they did. I think quite underwhelming tickets. The first Premier League away tickets and these little white things that have been all curled up in the post. I was expecting something glorious, particularly from the uh, champions from two years ago. It's a real shame. But yeah, I think details for the West Ham game uh, on the 1st of September are being released on Saturday, I believe, 4th. So hopefully uh, get tickets for that as well. For my, not my first trip to the Olympic Stadium, I've been there before. I've even ran on the track, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, that... So I'm looking forward to going to that to seeing how bad the view is. <laughs> I wish, to, wish we could have got Mina. He's classy. He would be great for us. He'd be well. He would be great for Man United as well when he goes there. Can't wait for that first away game this season. I'm buzzing. Me too. Me too. The appetite was whetted a little bit um, with Stoke and Derby, but they're not. They weren't the same. When you're standing there in an empty, <laughs> empty stadium, watching championship teams, it's not the same, is it? Newcastle lost four, four nil to Braga. Everton have been really poor since they they beat that bunch of plumbers or whoever it was. They beat them twenty two nil. They've been really poor since then. Uh, were Newcastle playing Braga tonight? Was it? Do you think that Jimenez or Bonatini will start against Villarreal? One of them will. Personally, I think I quite like, quite like the look of uh, Jimenez so far. 
he just offers something a little bit more, something different. But I don't know whether whether he will. Apparently, after two big signings, who do you think they will be? Uh, I think it'll be a defender. I think Pepe, possibly. There's all sorts of rumours going on about Pepe where they think that perhaps he's forcing the move and whatever. Triore, I think, is probably going to happen. I think, by the sounds of it, Nuno's really annoyed that... Um, that he was allowed to play for Middlesbrough the other night because he was due, I think, to come and sign or agree personal terms or do a medical or something the next day. And then he played for Middlesbrough, got injured, did his shoulder, and so he's out for six weeks or something, six to eight weeks. So um, he's uh, he's not um, he's not fit to start the season, but I think. I can imagine a signing in, but 18 million is a lot. Our bench is weak. It is weak. Hi, can you shout out my friend Nin? Nin. Hello, Nin. We're taking Veroni's last resort defender. This is Pepe. If we don't sign another other target, send Brian Allen loan. Yes, I c completely agree. Um, right. While there's 60 odd people in here, I just want to mention briefly the the idea that I had yesterday and, and sort of reiterate my annoyance at Wolves Twitter, not not the official Wolves Twitter, but Wolves Twitter community. I put up a tweet advertising this yesterday with a little bit of a divisive uh, title saying about should we trust Nuno? I've been through that at the start of the of the of the stream. Of course, we should trust Nuno. He's amazing. I love him. It was just a. It was it, for exactly what it was supposed to be. It was a bit of a, dis, uh, you know, to have a bit of a discussion. But then I tweeted an hour or so before about an idea I'd had for a video to create a sort of fan version of uh, the Wand Karlakimi idea. Uh, so everybody who's who saw the tweet or is watching this now, all I want and all, what I think it could, it could look amazing. And it could, could, it could go, as Gary Pandler would say, it could go virus. Um, but just a short clip of you singing one car like me, and then I'd put them all together, and we'd have a little one minute, two minute video of everybody, you know, a few people singing one car like me. There's links in the description for a uh, Google folder, Google Drive folder. So if you film yourself on your phone singing one Carla Kimi and drop it in that folder there, and then we can show our support for for Akimi. There, I think it was very sad news last week that he had to retire. I can't remember whether I touched on that in the last stream, but um, yeah, he's uh, been a great servant for the club, 18 years at one club. Although he had a lot of time out on loan uh, elsewhere. And stuff uh, so yeah 18 years at the club very very good uh, right then so people are still talking about Adama Traore I've signed him before on football manager as well so uh, <laughs> he, he must be good Akimi's got a coaching job in Nigeria now I think well not quite yet I think he's got to do a few badges and I think he's good he's still undergoing a little bit of treatment and stuff so he's not quite ready who do you think will be our standout player this season? I think that uh, Neves, I think, will shine in the Premier League. I think Jota as well will in, would. Uh... Oh, I can't answer that, Shiv. I can't answer that question. I think Jota is going to shine in the Premier League. I think he's going to be. Um... <clears throat> And that's why, really, I don't think we should worry about not signing too many players. Because if you think about the core of our squad from last year, they're amazing football players. And they are going to take the Premier League by storm anyway. And we've added Patricio to that. And we've added uh, Jimenez to that. We've added... Um, who's the other one? Johnny. And then we've made those, those loans permanent. That's a massive thing. You know, if you think about... Player who thinks, well, I might only be here for a year. Whereas now we've got Bolly and we've got 
all those players who think, well, I'm here now, and these, this is my club, this is my team. I think they're going to do uh, better. Didn't Everton bid 40 million for Jimenez last year? I'm not sure about that. Uh, why are we looking for a new striker when we already have Paul Gladden? Did you see uh, everybody yesterday that Wolves played a behind closed doors friendly against, uh, was it Mansfield or Macclesfield? One of those two. Um, I thought it was very odd. And there was a clip, I can't remember who put it on the Instagram. There's a clip, I think it was uh, Zyro, Michael Zyro put a clip on their Instagram on the way back on the bus and he was just silent. We've almost got like three separate squads now. We've got this bomb squad that we've even got um, somebody to come in and manage them. I can't remember his name. He used to manage crew. So Davis, possibly. Somebody will tell me now in the um, tell me in the comments. Darren Clements has just said that Wolves have activated Traore's release clause. Uh, let me see. Let's see if we can find that. Cody talks too much, but he's got what we need at the back. Passion. All the foreigners don't like him, do they? Because they can't, um, they can't understand him. <laughs> I think, I think, I still think Cody's got a chance of playing uh, Premier League. Not Premier. Oh, I'm talking about Premier League. England for England. Adama Wolves. Let's have a look. What are people saying? Uh, there's not a lot of latest. Have Wolves handed Huddersfield the chance to nab Traore? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I, 18 million is an awful lot, I think, for him. He had a great season last year in the in the prem in the championship. Not sure he's. I don't know. Well, I have to wait and see. I'm also waiting for a late night Tim Nash tweet. Got about 20 minutes or so, and I think it'll be. Uh, he's probably watching this. He'll wait for me to finish, and then he'll uh, he'll do that. <sighs> Timmy time. I tweeted yesterday. I'm just trying to find any Tim and ask him. Does he? Is there, is there anything in anybody? Please. Peter O'Rourke says we have activated it. I think Nuno will work his magic with him. The problem with that, as, as somebody else has said earlier on in the chat, is that if he did, if say Adama Traore does come in, he's got such a short time now to get from now until the beginning of the season. And with him being injured, he's going to have a really, really disrupted season, Traore, if he does come in. And if you think about 18 million, if you think that Jota signed for 13. I don't know. I think there, surely there must be somebody else out there who's better or more effective or more is going to make more of an impact for us. I don't know. Just me. Would you take Tammy Abraham? No way. No way. Uh, Football Insider states that he's Nuno's number one target. I think that's just lazy journalism. I think everybody knows that we've been interested in him. For a while, I think uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I think as well these rumours as well. The small in one in particular. Um, there's another one the other day. They just appeared out of nowhere. They're all made up by um, uh, bookies, by you know gambling websites and stuff. They'll if they tweet, if if Bet three six five or if um, <coughs> you know Coral or something tweets out. Oh, I can't believe that Wolves have been linked with X, Y, and Z. Marcus Rojo, Chris Smalling. 10, 100 people retweet that and it goes everywhere. Then people start believing it and then people go in the street and there's a club shop and whatever and they start talking about it. But it's not, I don't think there's, I don't think there's been any interest in Smalling really from Wolves. I don't think there's been serious interest in uh, Rojo. I think we just have to 
that's just wait and see. There's definitely going to be a couple more signings made in the next week or so. Yeah. If there was any striker you could sign up. I think Rashford, I think, has got a chance of uh, of coming in on loan. I think he'd be interesting. Breaking news, Jean Mario is in advance, talks to sign for Wolves. All in caps, so he must be true. Do you think Wolves will spend over 30 million this season? Uh, from what I've heard, a couple of people have told me that uh, that there is a bid in already for over thirty million for a player. I'd love it to happen. I'd love it to happen, but I can't see. It just seems too late in the window now for such a massive deal to go through. But I know that perhaps the bids on the table. They're waiting for a player to come back, perhaps from holiday from after the World Cup, and then personal terms and stuff will be quick. I don't know. How many goals and assists will Traore get? I don't know. He's not a Wolves player and he's injured anyway at the moment. Uh, what do you make of the guy who's trying to sue us for the badge? I think it's hilarious. I read that story a couple of months ago. I think he's been in court today or yesterday. And, uh, yeah, they basically said no. Because what would have had to have happened was the the competition, the the was it on the back of a poster or something like that? It was handed in. And then it would have had to be kept by a judge of this competition, put in a drawer somewhere for 15 years, and then they changed the badge to look like that. So there's no, there's nothing in it whatsoever. I don't think even the, it's not even the bloke who did the badge. I think it's his brother or something. He's passed away, and it's his brother or a family member of his who's going through it. Can't such cases become too old? <sighs> I think from what I read from the Express and Star today, it's, it's not happening anyway. They're not suing. They can't sue. The judge has said that there's no case to answer, so it's fine. I think anyway, suing Foson, they'd have. Uh, exa Do you know what, Shiv? Exactly. Pensioner versus Foson lawyers, no chance. Gone. Don't forget to drop a like on the stream, boys and girls. Let's get that number going up. Um. Yeah, I can't believe how quickly the transfer window seems to have come around. It also doesn't really make sense that our window is closing three weeks before Europe, Europe's window because we're going to be in massive, massive trouble if we were to lose. Or the bigger teams in particular, if they don't get in the plays they need and then, I don't know, somebody, somebody in uh, Europe takes a fancy to one of the top top players they can't replace them then can they so it's very very difficult i designed the walls badge don't believe the rest yeah <clears throat> oh more caps news phil taylor phil the power taylor is like and subscribed thank you very much phil we are going to do a lester predictions on who will be promoted from the uh, championship. I think the championship is going to be very entertaining this year, um, and I'm glad that we're not in it every year. I remember saying the same last year. It's, if you're going to win the championship this year, you're going to have to be a particularly good team, and we were, weren't we? Uh, this year, I think it's going to be much closer. There's so many teams that have changed, and there's so many things that have so many teams that have entered it that you know strong teams coming down from the Premier League and strong teams coming up from League One. It's going to be very, very difficult, I think. I think Stoke will get promoted. I think Derby will get promoted. And then the playoffs, I think, is anybody's guess. You can't really predict the playoffs, can you? But I don't think Villa will get promoted. Purely because I don't think that they... Uh, They've they've had this investment, but they haven't really been able to make much impact on the on the market because it's been so late. Perhaps Swansea, as people mentioned there, I, I'm not sure about that. Not that I follow them particularly closely, but I've got a bit of a soft spot for the Swans. But I just don't see them. They they need to have a season of a little bit of stability because and similar to 
the Albion and Stoke as well. All three of them are in real danger of dropping down to League One purely because we were guilty of it and Sunderland were guilty of it, of being in this mentality of just trying to win one game out of every six and stuff and really struggling to just get used to winning games. And then in the Championship, when you lose a game on a Tuesday and you've got another one on a Saturday and you lose that and you lose that and it just becomes very, very uh, difficult and relentless. But anyway, we don't have to worry about the Championship, do we? Because we're not in it. <laughs> Baggies might come up. Nah, they won't. Nah. Because they've got Graham Jones as Belgium's assistant manager. No, they haven't signed. They big signing today was that they re-signed Boaz Myhill when it 40 days after they, they released him. That shows their ambition. Can you say hello to my daughter Kelsey May? She's going to her first game on Saturday. They are. Hello, Kelsey May. Uh my first game back in 1998 is Portsmouth. We're sitting there in the Steve Bull Lower near the South Bank end, right next to Pompey. Uh, somebody said that because they know how to get out of that league. They don't know how to get out of the Championship, though, do they? Because they've been in the Premier League for eight years now. They've been fairly successful. I can't deny them the Albion that, but they they're not used to getting out of the out of the um, Championship anymore. They're not the same. They're not the same team. It's not like before when they were up and down, up and down. Then yeah, fair enough. They were used to getting out of the um, out of the the what's it? So. We have a great squad, brilliant young guns. In a few years, we're going to beat Aiming for mid-table and Europa. Definitely. Well, in a few years, I think it'd be more than Europa, Phil. I think it'd be more than that. Villa Payne Mendes, I don't know the details. I know that they've signed a goalkeeper today from Atletico Madrid on loan. And, uh, yes. So, but I don't, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. I think Leeds as well, he had some involvement in a sale Ronaldo Vieira to Sampdoria um, so it's funny that there's two teams who complained about him last year are now using him that's very very interesting there was another is Mendes going to send the bomb squad to Villa I'd love that <laughs> can you imagine Michael Zairo and all of them lot? Um, down the Villa wouldn't mind being the baggies in the Prem. Yeah, no, I wouldn't either. I'd love that. And that's kind of why I wanted I wanted to get them I wanted to get them in the cups last year because I thought we'd have absolutely smashed them. Uh Vinagre to start, possibly. Brian, we've had a, I don't know if you've just come on, mate, but we've had an awful long chat about who we might sign. So when once this video's over, you can go back to the beginning and watch uh when we talk about them. Uh, Fosun actually said they want European football. Well, they've said they want to win the Premier League, so it's sort of uh, hinted at in that that they want um, they want European football. And they've said about getting Wolves back to their form, former glories, and our former glories, of course, are in European football. Uh, let me have a look now. Hopefully, we'll get Pepe Lindelof on loan. Good for slow but sure start for our league climb sensibly. Yeah. As a Welsh sports fan, I'm desperate for the UK to host the World Cup. Only way we'll actually qualify. <laughs> Tell me, buddy. Tell me, buddy, zigzag. We might qualify for the Euros next time, don't we? And maybe the World Cup in 2026, is it? We've got this 48 teams, so the Wales will have a chance there. We can hope. Would you take Grealish? No, we don't need him either. Think about the setup that we've got now with the two midfielders of Moutinho and Neves. We don't need um, we don't need that. What about Yerry Mina? Take Yerry Mina. I don't know. I, I've never heard of him before the World Cup, to be honest. But I think he um, he played really, really, really well, tickling the game against England. Good for a good, good for a goal as well from a corner. <laughs> First Premier League manager to get the sack. Somebody said Warnock down there. 
I think Warnock might surprise everybody this year. They might end up finishing fourth or something. <laughs> uh, who do I think is the first manager to get a sacking thing? It's going to be somebody like... Uh, yeah, Mark Hughes is a good shot there. It's good. Yeah, the Watford manager, because they are just sack happy, aren't they? They love getting rid of managers. Garcia, I see. Yeah, get Aldice in. He'll keep them up. <laughs> yeah, that's Zig Zag. That's an excellent shot. That could well happen. Sack Warnock in January. Get Aldice in. He keeps them up. Mourinho, I think, is another good shot. He's had an awful start to the, the season. He hasn't even started yet. Shame about Douglas. Yeah, I'm not sure. Somebody just mentioned whether he's. Um, Image has been taken down from the club shop. I'm not sure. I think I might go in tomorrow. I haven't got the new shirt yet. I'm not keen on it. What do you all think about the kit now? I Would you delete your channel if Wolves got relegated? No, because I'd get loads of subscribers from it because people would be interested in my little rants, wouldn't they? But yeah, I'm going, I'm going into the club shop tomorrow. To not Maybe not... I, don't, I haven't decided if I'm going to buy the shirt or not yet because I really don't like the colour. I didn't. I like this. I really like the shirt. I like the Adidas bits on the side, and the badge and everything. The sponsor, I think, is fine as well. But the colour of it. When I went to Stoke last week, there was, there was you know, couples walking together to the game, and they had uh, the old kit or last season's kit next to the new one, and it just looks yellow. And you think about us going up into the Premier League, we're the only team that plays in that sort of colour, and no, we're not. We're like the same as Watford, or I think it's really, um, it doesn't fit. And I, th I, I imagine that next season they'll go back to a more deeper sort of orange, but we'll, uh, we'll see. Uh, right, a couple of questions there. Away shirt, maybe. I, I do really like the away shirt. I think it looks really, really smart. Perhaps I might buy the away shirt and the home shorts and make myself a new little uh, white and black wolves kit. Love the new kit, although not a fan of the white away kit. Oh, God, complete opposite to me, Marcus. But never mind. I really don't like the sponsor logo and placing on the shirt. Stopped me buying one. Wanted the white away top. Looks odd next to the old shirts, yeah. Will you go on Arsenal Fan TV outside the ground? If they ask me to, I'd have no problem doing that. Um, yeah, as long as I get beaten up. By the thousands of people that there will be standing behind them. Right, last couple of minutes of this stream, then I'll be going off at 10 o'clock. Uh, really enjoyed this, and there's been loads more people here today. I think last week I had to do it at 2 o'clock in the afternoon because of the um, Stoke game affected it a little bit. But yes, yeah, it's been about 70 odd people here all the time. That's, uh, that's really, really good really enjoy these hopefully uh keep up through the season i was having a third kit they haven't announced it but i don't think they had at this point last year i know that leicester who are also uh, made by uh adidas they've just released their um third kit or their alternate kit so i think it's, it's definitely a possibility i'd like one to be honest because i don't really like either one red training kit's very nice yeah i'm looking for i don't know if it exists but if anybody remembers when wolf played villa at home last year uh they had nuno was wearing like a black hoodie and i'm looking for a similar sort of thing to that tomorrow that's what i'm going in to the club shop for villa real prediction we will have a football match wolves will be taking it very seriously villa real less so and Wolves are going to win because we need to win before the season starts. Players had their faces scanned for FIFA 19 yesterday. Yeah, I saw that because uh, was it Benny Ashley Seal put it on Instagram? I was I was not looking forward to FIFA 19 from the game bits, like the timing stuff and the dynamic tactics and stuff that was boring and rubbish. And I was thinking, oh. I'm only going to buy it 
to get to see Molyneux on it. And then when I saw the faces and stuff, I was thinking, oh, yes, oh, we're going to be on it probably. Yes, come on. Yeah, Molyneux on FIFA 19 as well. It's going to be amazing. <clears throat> Uh, is that the rule you have to have three kits? I'm not sure it is definitely a rule. I think most teams do have three kits though. Which makes you many. Yeah, Neves will actually look like himself. I can't wait. Right, in the last couple of minutes then of this stream before I go off, can you just let me know between now and next Friday before the season starts, what videos would you like to see me making? Uh, I've got nothing to do <laughs> over the next week or so what would you like me to do uh video wise in that time quick you've got one minute one minute left what videos do you want to see me do what do you want to see me do i'm obviously doing a prediction transfer deadline day all day stream strip <laughs> oh karen terry uh right prediction video obviously I can't, do you know what, I've realised I might try and swap it with somebody, but I'm actually working on transfer deadline day. But I would love to do, um, I'd love to do something like this. I am going on Saturday, yeah. Uh, so I've been doing a video every single day now for, for the last 10 days or something, I think it's been. So I'm going to keep that up, so... I'll have a thing. Probably my prediction video. Uh, I'll leave it till next week. Maybe I'll do a Wolves specific prediction video and then a more general Premier League video. If I see you, I'll buy your pot. Oh, cheers, Jason. <laughs> We're going to get last minute winners. Nice one, mate. Definitely watching it. Right. Thank you, everybody. Don't forget to drop a like qu quickly on the stream now before I head off. Uh, tell your friends about it. It's been great. Look forward to doing it next Wednesday as well. And next Wednesday will be the last one before the, the season starts. Very, very excited uh, about it. And I think we'll call it there, shall we? Thank you, Dan. Thank you, everybody. It's been a pleasure. And I'm really pleased for the first time that the microphone didn't go off. It's all because I've got a little stool here and I've put it on there. Right. Cheers, everybody. Thank you very much. See you. Bye-bye.